Hello, my name is Mel and I am back at it with another budget action camera review. This time with the Ape Man native 4K action camera Trao? 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 Let's cut to the chase and talk about the format of this video while I throw up some b-roll of me unboxing it. Number one, to be a budget action camera it's gotta cost less than $150. Two. I need 1080p for video resolution, although I do prefer 4K, and with this it has to come with good quality video. Number three, it's got elect number three, it's gotta have electronic image stabilization without a gimbal. Number four, I need to have interchangeable batteries. And number five, the audio needs to sync with the video. In the box you get the camera itself that comes in a waterproof housing that uses the GoPro buckle mount. It comes with two batteries, some anti-fog inserts, a handlebar mount, looks like a second backdoor to the housing, a USB to micro USB cable, a metal tether, some sticky pads, a GoPro tripod adapter mount, some arms, a frame mount, some zip ties, a bunch of Velcro straps, and some other straps, some buckle mounts with a tripod, a quarter twenty tripod screw in it, a GoPro clip, a J buckle, and a microfiber towel. On Amazon, it's listed for ninety dollars, but very often it's on sale, as you can see. In the Ape Man line, this is the highest model called A one hundred. Now that it's out of the box, let's take a quick look at the camera more in detail. It's got four buttons, this nice screen on the back that is, that is not a touch screen. Nothing on the front but the lens and a little LED indicator that blinks red when the camera is recording. On the top it's got two buttons, enter slash record and a on slash off slash mode button. On the left side appears to be the only mic port that I can find. And there's a little opening on this side, but it doesn't look like a microphone port. An up and down button. On the right side, underneath this little flap here, a micro USB port, a micro HDMI port, and the SD slot. On the bottom, it's just the battery port. This one doesn't come with the remote. But apparently there's an app that you can download on either Google Play or the Apple Store. But when I try to connect it, the Wi-Fi doesn't show up on my phone, so I haven't been able to get it to work. I haven't been very lucky with budget action cameras and their apps. Let's turn on the camera and see what video resolutions this camera has. When you first turn the camera on, pushing the mode button will cycle through all the modes of the camera. That one is video, this one is photo, replay, and now to your settings. Its highest setting is 4K at 30 frames per second, and its lowest setting is 720p. And the only resolution that you can have 120 frames per second is at 720p. When we take the camera for a walk, the video is decent, but it's noticeably noisy. It's a little less noticeable when, you, when you're using the camera outside, but it becomes a lot more obvious inside. Sun is still out. Camera is set to 4K at 30 frames per second. Look at me. And stabilization is on. Now I want to try the video in 2.7K and 1080p and see if the noise goes away. Here's it says in a fairly well lit room. Camera is set at 2.7K at 30 frames per second. Yeah. 
And now here we are at 1080p at 30 frames per second. All right, after reviewing the video, you can see it's a little bit better, but it's still kind of noisy. I suppose if you're familiar with post-production that you might be able to sharpen the image a little bit, but who wants to do that? There appear to be three different angles of view, wide, medium, and narrow. Now on accident, I turned on video looping on this camera. And what happens is that the camera records in one minute clips. It'll record straight through once you press the record button. But when you download it onto your computer, you have several one minute clip videos, which I made a mistake that they, it's, it's easy to put them together in a program like iMovie and especially Adobe Premiere or even Final Cut Pro. But after I noticed it, I went back into the camera, I turned video loop recording off, and it records in 6 minute and 30 second clips. Now this is something that we used to see GoPro do back in the Hero 3 and 4 days, where it would record in 10 minute clips, but it would record straight through. I guess uh, the budget action camera world has not caught up yet. Now let's take a look at a low light situation. Yeah, as you can see, that noise is a little bit more noticeable in low light, but it's still usable for the average user. We'll take a look at it now in extreme low light, and it's about par for the course when it comes to budget action cameras. Now on to testing the electronic image stabilization. Now you've seen some of the stabilization already, but let's take it for a walk outside and, and pay attention to the horizon, or like the tree line in the background, and see how much it moves. So here we go again with the camera set to a medium lens angle. Is it a little bit better and how is the lens distortion doing? Because uh, I wasn't able to find on this camera, although I thought there was this option before on this camera to remove lens distortion. How does it look? Ooh, this is a mess. So as you can see with the electronic image stabilization on, the camera does a pretty decent job at stabilizing the image. Number four, interchangeable batteries. I think it's awesome that this camera came with two batteries that you can use. When we take the battery out, it's a proprietary lithium ion battery, 3.7 volts and has 1,350 milliamps. It's your pretty basic battery, and because you have two, that means you can record even longer. But like other action cameras I've used, this battery only lasts about 45 minutes. I haven't timed it, but from casual use, I noticed that I was changing the batteries a little bit more often than in my Insta360 ONE X, and I know for sure that battery lasts an hour. Number five, audio. In this camera, the audio does sync with the video, but because there only appears to be one microphone, the audio is pretty muffled. But let's find out for sure real quick if there really is only one microphone in this thing. So what I'll do is I'll start recording, as you can see by the red beeping on the camera, and then we're gonna talk at it at all different sides and see what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like talking to the camera on its left side. This is what the camera sounds like when you're talking to it at the front which is what you'll be doing most of the time. This is what it sounds like when you're talking to the camera on its right side. This is what it sounds like when you're talking at the camera's back. This is what it sounds like when you're talking to the camera on its bottom. And this is what it sounds like when you're talking to the camera on the top. So after doing some very sophisticated testing around the camera and listening to that video, yeah, it appears that there, o there is only one microphone port on this camera which is here next to the two buttons. So when you're looking at the front of the camera, it's on the camera's right side. So from listening to the audio when the camera is up close, the audio is a little bit more clear, but you can definitely hear a lot of background noise. 
Now if you're the type of person that's using this camera to vlog, the audio coming out of this camera would be okay for you. And I mean just okay. But what if you're gonna be around water and you want to take this camera into the water? But what happens when you try to put it in the waterproof case? Can you hear me at all? Probably not. And now, as you can hear, you can't hear a single thing when the camera's inside its case. But like I've said before, if I'm putting it in the case, I'd rather protect my camera than hear what's going on. So my final thoughts. It's a decent camera for a beginner. And I'd say if you were gonna get this camera on sale, then it's a great deal. But for $100, I'd pick something like the last camera that I reviewed. So image quality. If one is video quality from a cell phone camera in 2001 and 10 is the GoPro Hero 7 Black, I can't say eight because I don't have that camera yet. I give it a five. And for audio, if one is a 2001 cell phone camera video, and if 10 is my D80 D3 Pro, I also give it a five. But that's just my humble opinion. That's why I put out the clips of the camera in action and show you the different types of situations you might be using the camera in so you can make the decision for yourself. Now, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment. If you wanna see more videos like this, I'd love it if you subscribed. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.